The Firearms Radio Network provides the bandwidth for this edition of the Firearms Insider Gun and Gear Podcast. Welcome to the Firearms Insider Gun and Gear Review Podcast, episode 435. This show is brought to you by Primary Arms and VZ Grips. I'm Chad Wallace, and in this show, I have an air gun review, and we talk about some interesting new stuff. As you may know, we showcase guns, gear, and anything else you, as a gun enthusiast, may be looking for. We do our best to evaluate products from an unbiased and honest perspective. And you won't believe it, but with me tonight, we have Tony, Rob, Rusty, who is now a co-host. And for all of you who don't believe it, Zane or Luigi as we call him, if you're watching the video, you'll understand why, is back. I don't know how long he'll be back. He said he might be able to make it once a month, which means once every solstice. <laughs> so, Which is still more frequently than Tony puts on his podcast. <laughs> thank you, Rob. <laughs> uh, our first sponsor of the night, as you already know, is Primary Arms. And Primary Arms seeks to provide you the best shopping experience for everything firearms. With over 13,000 products from your favorite brands, Primary Arms carries a complete selection of rifles, handguns, firearm parts, and shooting gear. Every order comes with a commitment to superior service, fast shipping, and an expert support team. Our Primary Arms Project of the Week this week is the Night Vision Primary Arms Exclusive Tritium Front Lower Third for Red Dot Sights. And if you watch the video... You know, you can see them on this gun right here. Uh, they're actually pretty cool. I know Zane doesn't like night sights, but let me get up here and make this larger. There's the rear. The front is not super wide. Can you actually see the front? There we go. Uh, it's too light in here to see the tritium. but And they, they co-witness with the sights here, so they're up past so I can actually see... Uh, but they're pretty cool. I think they run about a hundred bucks retail, uh, but it is their new, newer site. Uh, it is like I said, just a fr tritium front dot, regular post, serrated rear, no tritium in the rear. And I don't, I don't dislike night sights. You you have two night sights on that gun. I do have I two know, night sights on. This, I don't have dots work <laughs> fantastically at night. They do. <clears throat> Yes. I'm back, folks. I yeah, know you all missed me. But yeah, they they do. I do not have a light on this gun though, so you know I don't have the third night light. <laughs> but they changed it up again on you, so you can go to frn.deals/pa still and sign up for the newsletter. But the coupon code is back to frn. None of this kit stuff. But if you buy a primary arms optic, you will get one of the primary arms gun cleaning kits by using the code FRN. So now, since everybody's back, what did we do in firearms? You know, whoever wants to go first, you know, I guess nobody wants to. So, well, I guess well, Luigi and Rusty are both gone. Oh, so. I wore a t-shirt that said Gun to Gear Review Podcast. That's the closest I've got. <laughs> you mean you're not trying to shoot sharks yeah. off that platform? No, we got to go through uh, TSA just to get on a helicopter at the heliport. So, no, they won't even let me carry a knife. Oh, geez. What do what, you know? Carry a knife. Can, can, can they let you carry a knife? I was yep. going to, I was, I, I was going to say. You know, our other sponsor, VZ Grips, has these G10 daggers. And the G10 doesn't show up, from what I hear. So, you know, it's... One of those. You know, I don't know if that's true or not, but, you know, it's it's worth a try. And, I mean, come on, it's a freaking private helicopter you're flying out on. <laughs> Whatever. Ah. Uh, and it's Zane, yeah, or Luigi, whoever you are, tell us I all. I've done some dry firing, so that's about it. Okay, Zane can tell us all the stuff he did once he gets off mute, or not. <laughs> I don't think Zane, he... you're on mute. <laughs> He's not talking anyway, so it doesn't matter. 
Uh, His lips are tied behind uh, that mustache. I'm talking. The goddamn button don't want to work. Jeez, five minutes. <laughs> Boy, this this podcast is like five seconds long after you bleep, it, bleep out all the cuss words. Yeah, no kidding. We got lots of stuff. Uh, I didn't I didn't do anything either, so I just finished up a couple so, of reviews. Tony, go ahead. Had the diversity shoot. Was awesome. New people. Great. Uh, a lot of kids came to this one, as in young adults, uh, 18, 19 years old. So that was great, introducing the new generation to it. Uh, my guys came through with their various guns. We had a Ruger uh, uh, precision rifle and 22 long rifle with a moderator on it. And an ATN, uh, is that the name of it? ATN uh, FLIR yep. on it. So... They were just having fun shooting that from a, a tripod uh, we had set up. And then one of my guys uh, bought his Kimber uh, 1911. And he he said he got it at a good price. Uh, that's a good thing because it was annoying. Uh, it was a Kimber, so it worked it, 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 every it other was shot. Doing Kimber, it was doing Kimber stuff. Oh, dude, it was just... It, you fire around, and you can feel the slide just slow down as it came back. It was like, shanka, boom. It was accurate, but uh, it was uh, annoying. And then uh, one of the other guys had a, like, Gen 5 Glock 34. And, you know, I'm just, like, stacking rounds on top of each other with a Gen 5 Glock 34 and the camera shooting to the left. Uh, you can almost count Mississippi's watching the slide go back, but we put about a hundred hundred rounds through it, and as you shot it more, it started to loosen up. But that that goes into that whole break-in period for a firearm thing. For as much money as you charge for a Kimber, why don't they fire five hundred rounds through it and give me a gun that works? That's all I'm saying. Somehow Glock the, the Glock figured it out with the Glock thirty four. So, yeah, I shot those couple of guns. Definitely had fun with them. And uh, it was a great event. Can't wait for the next one. Zane, you're up. I'm here. I figured out the mute button. Um, so I've been here for a while. I don't know what the hell I've talked about, what I haven't talked about. But I moved into a new house uh, and had to actually figured out how to lock guns up because there is a child that lives in my house now. So been, I've installed quick access safes and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Aside from that, I have been shooting uh, this a little bit. This is my Colt 69, uh, 6920 LE. Yeah, that. Which you may notice there is a primary arms optic on that I am still writing a review on, uh, and a uh, Brasher Brash Tactical Sling that I think I wrote the review on, but I don't think I ever submitted to you, Chad. That's okay. We're the, the, I mean, we did it on there, and we kind of just talked about it. So how's I, that Enigma review? Okay. <laughs> Look, man. I may or may not have been wearing an Enigma a lot lately. I can neither deny nor confirm that because of reasons and things. The review is written. Again, it's it's submitting. You know, the problem is just finishing up stuff. I haven't done a whole ton other than just shooting this thing and trying to, especially this primary arms optic, just trying to get a good feel for it. I, I you know... I've been busy, y'all, uh, obviously. But um, got a class coming up that I'm teaching in September. I'm finally getting back in the swing of firearms. I just, this moving period, new, I, I moved, got a, two new jobs, and uh, it's been, uh, I, I, been busy. But I'm, I'm back, I'm here, you know. I'll, I think the real reason is, is not, he got two jobs. He moved. I think the real reason is is he's he's got some friend with him now, you know. <laughs> so you know. Yeah, living with a woman, you know. <laughs> okay. Is, um, she, irritates, she irritates me a lot. 
Don't even say okay like you didn't just talk to her before we came live on air. You didn't see her on this damn camera. Hey. Whatever, dude. Yeah. I know the reason he can't write reviews is because he's busy racing carts. I've seen them. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. You know. Old Luigi there. You sure he's not jumping off of mushrooms and going down pipes? Uh, yeah, probably both. Those are two jobs. And I've also managed to grow a sweet mustache. Yeah, if you're a 72, 1972 porn star. His mustache Everything looks like from he, the 70s are coming back. Listen, his mustache looked like he gave birth to Tom. Back. His mustache looked like he gave birth to Tom Selleck's mustache. <laughs> uh, okay. Back to Tom Selleck. Shorts are coming back. I don't know if you noticed, but the shorts are getting shorter, and the it, it, the Hawaiian shirts are coming back. Mustaches are coming back. Even mullets are coming back. It's coming back. Don't fight it. Embrace it. Great. Yeah. All Except the sucky. overalls next to becoming a die laugh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Hell, great. I own two revolvers now. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's how much there, the buddy. 80s are coming back. Yeah, pretty soon. amazing. Pretty soon he'll buy himself one of those 10 millimeter Smith and Wessons or whatever from the 80s. I, I was just saying, I've got a Smith and Wesson. Oh, Brent 10. I like mine. There's yeah, 10. don't worry. The Brent 10 won't come back. You'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. I, <I'll... laughs> Well, well, you know, in the yeah, in the oh, chat it says Sam Elliott, but I th I th I think Sam Elliott's mustache is, you know, I think it might be a little shorter than Zane's. I'm not sure. No, I don't think you can no, see Sam Elliott's so, bottom lip. <laughs> that's true. Sam Elliott just has a, a little more gray in it than mine, um, and and that's not because just for me. And doesn't help mine, but you know, there's that. <laughs> okay. If you cut it off, send it I'm to only me. Thirty five. I'm, I'm not doing it yet. I'm not doing it yet. Just for men used to be Zane's screen name. <laughs> now it's Luigi. <laughs> <laughs> or the or or oh, uh, the same Elliot comments a fucking girlfriend halfway across the house. <laughs> That's <can't>. cool. <laughs> Sorry, I did it. I could, I'm not bad. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> okay. It's going to go on mute now. Yeah. So, announcements, as you know, bandwidth sponsors, our friends over at Patriot Patch Co. Uh, they got all kinds of cool patches and various other stuff. Uh, I guess that I saw that the patch of the month is a little late this week or month or whatever, but it is the, you know, sun's out, guns out, tiki god surfing or something like that. So, it's in there. Uh, you can, you know, buy T-shirts like Rusty has on or had on before he dropped off because, you know, the Internet off the in the water sucks on the FRN site. So, all the other stuff, discounts, affiliates, they're in the show notes, a bunch of other stuff. So, you can go check those out. Uh, we still have the PowerTac M5G2 giveaway going on on Instagram. You can go check out that post and comment on it to enter to win. There is a link to it in the show notes. So, you know, if you want to go do that, head on over. Rob. Chat. The views and opinions expressed in this podcast are those of the individual co-hosts and do not reflect the official policy or position of the Firearms Radio Network and or their employers. This is not legal advice, nor should it be considered as such. Viewer discretion is advised. This is especially true on live shows. And now for a review of a little pellet gun, here's Chad. Yep, exactly. Little is not what I would exactly say this pellet gun is. But, you know, if you see the pictures, you'll understand. Uh, it's for the Umarex Origin. Uh, this one actually has a pump with it. I have it here, but it's, you know, it's like rifle sized, so it's not easy to show on the video. So I'm just not going to show it. So if you want to see pictures of it or look at the review, head on over to the firearmsinsider.tv and check it out. So, you know, for some time I had actually been thinking about getting a high pressure air rifle. You know, and I was looking at something 22 caliber, 
possibly for small game or anything else that seemed interesting. So, of course, I ran across the Umarex origin, and after a bunch of questions to Umarex, uh, here we are with a great all-around PCP air rifle. You can also get the origin in 25 caliber if that's your thing. Uh, for some reason, my computer's not working. It must have Zanitis or something. So, if you haven't heard of Umarex, they have been making air guns for quite a while. Uh, in fact, you can pretty much buy any style type from them, from spring air to all the way up th to these pre-charged pneumatics. Uh, they also have airsoft and various other style air guns also. Uh, the Origin, as I said, is it's a PCP style or the pre-charged pneumatic uh, with a few unique attributes most notice, notably is Umarex has an ever-pressure tank system on it. The ever-pressure tank allows you to fire a shot without having to fully charge the air pressure tank. One might ask how you charge it. In this case, it's from a high-pressure hand pump. Think bicycle-style air pump, but high-pressure for PCP air guns. You can purchase the Origin with or without the pump, of course, I received the version with the pump. Without it, you'd need a high-pressure air tank to get it filled at industrial scuba store. Or maybe if you're Zane, you could just fill it at work. But, <laughs> you know, I don't think we all have that luxury. Uh, because it does take around 140 pumps to that bicycle pump to completely fill the Origins air tank. With, this is where the ever-pressure tank system comes into play. If you only need one shot you only need to put about 13 pumps, full pumps into the origin tank. If you completely fill the origins tank, you can expect 30 to 40 usable full pressure shots out of it. A lot of PCP air rifles need to be up to, you know, 2,700 PSI or something. So you got to pump them more than just the 13 times, like a hundred to get them there. Even though the origin is considered an entry level PCP air rifle, it is not. The Origin will do pretty much anything more expensive PCP rifles will do. For instance, it has a 1 in 19 twist rifled barrel that shoots 22 caliber pellets as well as the 22 caliber air gun slugs. The slugs, of course, are essentially a bullet. They don't have the normal pellet look to them. I did some experimentation with some different weights, found the this particular origin, the one I have, will fire up to and including 23 grain slugs with decent accuracy and velocity. You know, more on that later. The origin also has a built-in scope rail, which is nice. The rail is un unique in that it will, it will accept 11 millimeter dovetail mounts as well as standard Picatinny slash Weaver mounts, depending on what you have. So the small, like, air gun 22 caliber or one dovetails or standard a huge advantage to the pcp air rifles is that any scope can be used there's no need for the special air gun scope or anything to that effect so that's always a big plus lastly so the this is so entry-level pcp this one has an adjustable trigger which, you know, is pretty cool. You can adjust the trigger pull weight down to about two and a half pounds. Has a travel adjustment, as they say, which is kind of like pre-travel. Then there's an over-travel adjustment. Even with the adjustment, the trigger has more of an entry-level feel to it, though. It's, it's not as crisp as I'd like it to be. Uh, and then the Origin also comes with two 10-round magazines. So now that you have the general rundown of the Origin, uh, the Origin is a side lever bolt action style kind of rifle. The cocking handle actually rotates out and back to cock the rifle. Pushing the charging handle back forward loads one in the one of the rounds in the magazine. When the magazine happens to run dry, the Origin won't allow you to push the cocking handle forward, thus letting you know that it's time to change the magazine. The safety is behind the charging handle is pretty self-explanatory. 
the magazines w- seem to work well for me. You get two with the rifle. Uh, I'd buy a couple extras, so you have four. Uh, that reason you can get all of the full, once it's charged, you can get a complete charge with all the shots that are in it, essentially. The stock on the Origins Polymer resembles a varmint-style full-length stock. I found the stock to be comfortable, even though I didn't really care for the semi-finger-grooved pistol grip. The length of pull might be a little long for some people. Uh, There's also no sling studs or QD mounting points in the stock, so if you're going to carry it in the field, that could present a challenge. Uh, The complete rifle is fairly long also, at just over 43 inches. The air cylinder sits below the barrel and extends out to the end of it. It kind of gives the Origin an over-under shotgun look. It's kind of different. And then the airport, the f- fill port is on the bottom of the stock just in front of the trigger. There is a plastic dust cover that goes over it that I happen to have laying around in my desk somewhere because it broke off. <laughs> uh, the tab, basically, it's just got a little plastic tab that holds it from being lost. Well... After about five uses, the tab broke off. You can still put the dust cover on and it holds, but it's no longer attached when you're filling the tank. Now, the Origin performed far beyond my expectations. It's super accurate with the right velocities and pellet weights. Uh, I did end up mounting an Athlon Optics 2.5 to 15 on it, and it's a phenomenal scope by itself and it is on the origin also uh part of the reason i chose the 22 caliber is the available availability of pellets locally uh you can get the crossman heavy they call them heavy 14.3 grain ones just about at any sporting goods store around uh and at full velocity they can reach a thousand feet per second Uh, i did buy some heavier h and n 21.14 grain pellets and they average about 950 feet per second at full velocity. The Origin does have adjustable shot presser, so you can tune the velocities. Uh, I found that accuracy improved as I backed the adjustment screw out one to two turns. Uh, these settings drop the velocities about 50 feet per second, so not too much. Just like normal rifles, find the pellet or slug that works best for accuracy in your particular gun. Uh, I was getting under half inch groups at 25 yards with just about anything I put through the origin. Uh, so with this accurate, get, getting small game like a rabbit or something at 50 yards should be pretty easy. Uh, especially since, you know, my best group size was with the 21 grain H and N's. I did shoot a 0.258 inch five shot group with those. These shoot spectacularly out of the origin. Uh, they also have a respectable velocity of w- w- when shooting that group of 920 feet per second. Uh, I did also shoot some 21 grain slugs that shoot very well out of the origin. Uh, they're not quite as accurate, but pretty close. They had an average velocity of about 880 feet per second. The slugs have way better ballistic coefficients, so much so that they're still going about 700 feet per second at 100 yards. So, and for me, the 25 grain and heavier slugs started keyholing at 25 yards, which with a 1 in 19 twist barrel didn't surprise me. Uh, And because the Origin has little to no recoil, you can actually witness the slug or pellet trace in the scope. So you can actually, which is kind of weird because normally with a rifle you don't see that. Uh, The PCP air rifles are not, known for being quiet but they are hearing safe the origin is actually louder than i would have guessed it to be it's not uncomfortable of course they do put a built-in moderator in it which helps mitigate a little bit of the sound but i don't know if it makes that much difference so when you fill the origin with the included pump you can burn some calories so if you need some exercise that might help you out uh, the hand pump's pretty easy to use, but like I said, it requires a bit of actual strength. Uh, when you get up in pressure, probably the last 30 to 40 pumps, 
you're pumping up to 4,500 PSI into the Origins tank. So as it gets hard, I get it. Nothing, Tony. <laughs> the Origins tank has a one-way valve, so air in the tank won't leak back out. Uh, I really wish the hose from the pump was a little longer because you essentially have to lay the rifle on the ground next to it to, to fill it up. The pump does have a pressure relief screw on it, and take my word for it, release the pressure in the pump before you unhook it from the rifle. Uh, otherwise, you get this huge amount of air that's in the hose, basically not in the gun itself that comes flying out at you. Uh, the Origins tank pretty much will stay full indefinitely, so what I tend to do is charge the rifle before I store it away. That way it's ready to go the next time I want to use it. So if you're looking at getting into PCP air rifles, you can't really go wrong with the Umarex Origin kit, the one with the pump. Has everything you need to get started and costs under 400 bucks. The Origin is a fantastic air rifle with great accuracy. I'm thoroughly impressed with what Umarex has done with the Origin. Uh, I'd never really expected to like the Origin as much as I do. So if you're into air rifle hunting or just want to have fun at the range, you should definitely go take a look at the Umarex Origin. So for our Firearm Insider Review, eight key points. Claim to fame, you probably have guessed this. It's an entry-level PCP air rifle with non-entry-level performance. So the target market's pretty much anybody that wants a PCP air gun. Features and benefits, there's a few here. Uh, super easy to use 22 caliber multi-pump, which more I, PCP air rifle. It's got that patented air pressure ch air chamber. Uh, you can do, a. it says 120 pumps per fill is what they spec out. It took me a little more, maybe they weren't all full stroke. Uh, you do get the 40 shots per fill. You can... 13 pumps, you can get one shot off. Automatic air pressure relief, the hand pump, the magazines, the side cocking lever, the combo pick rail. It They consider it a two-stage adjustable trigger, and yeah, it's a two-stage. <laughs> the barrel length itself is 23 inches, uh, and we've gone over the rest. Uh, there's some you know, other options available, you can get it without the air pump. Uh, what others are saying, there's some in there. There's a link to another review. Price point is $379.99. It's the same on Amazon. Last I checked, I think Umarex had it on sale for like $340 or something. So for our rating, the pros includes a hand pump. The Ever Pressure system is pretty cool. It is super accurate. The combo scope rail... Compared to others, the price is pretty good. And you can shoot air gun slugs out of it. The cons, the trigger kind of sucks, even though it's usable. Doesn't include a single shot tray, so if you want to do single shots, it's a little harder. And that fill port dust cover that broke off, but still kind of works. But even with all those, I still did give it a score of 8.5, which was great. And now, Tony, Rob, Zane... Rusty, you can all ask the questions can you want to ask. Can, I, got can I just say how hard it was not to say that's what she said every <laughs> 17 <laughs> seconds <laughs> during your... It's like, I, you get a couple pumps and you can shoot it right <laughs> off. And I, 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 a little I need, longer and harder. And No, geez, no. I, right. I need to recap. I, I need to recap what was said during this entire thing. Huh. Because this is what I heard. It may be cutting out. Uh, he said he enjoyed hand pumping it. But yep. after about heard 13 that. strokes, it at least go off once. He wished it yep. was longer. Because mm -hmm. uh, 26 yep. inches isn't enough for him. <laughs> no, sir. And, and yeah, yeah, yeah. And and he'd have to lay down on the and ground. And he's to 50 yards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The and he mentioned PCP a bunch. Like, uh, yeah, well, uh, what's going on in your life? Which I'm assuming, I don't think he ever once said, but I'm assuming means pneumatic compressed. Uh, 
That, that is not true. It, it's pre-charged pneumatic. And I did so say when, that in uh, the, the second paragraph. The, 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 all I heard <laughs> was I pumping and, and stroking and... See, oh, it's it's a, a long, and, and the, this is why nobody missed me. You, you, uh, no, no, much, no. Much like, Chris Carter. much like prison sex, the longer it went on, the worse it got. Um... <laughs> Just you know, I feel bad for UberX, but not really because they did send this to us. <laughs> All right, look, Uber but X, on, a, on a serious, it'll be the last time uh, they send anything to us ever again. Well, as far as Uber, no, nah, but on a serious yeah. note, yeah, I was gonna say, on, on a serious note, like the idea of having an animal that you can hunt with, you know, small game that you can use a regular scope on and not have to get some stupid weird scope because air guns destroy uh, scopes. That's cool. Also, if you live in a state that has some sort of restrictions, that's cool. If you're a convicted felon, this ain't a firearm. You Oh, I'm sure Jersey is a firearm. That's cool. Uh, if you just... Yeah, Jersey probably does, but free states don't. Um, but or if you're just into a challenging yourself, is there a way to fill this without? Yeah, you you know of I'm course you you were you... pumping it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I you like I, I air compressor. Well, you can buy high pressure air pressures, or you, oh. or like in your case, you can pretty much fill it from a freaking air tank like your air tanks you breathe out of like a scuba tank oh yeah i'll fill out a fire station <laughs> yeah, that's the, that's the thing is or you can take it like if you have the no tanks hand pumping short stroking <laughs> hard stroking none of that stuff you talked about nope not doing none of that exactly it's, so um, uh we got a we got a comment about air guns destroying scopes anyone want to take that why that is uh, i'll take it if no one else wants to you can take it it's because of the reverse on the spring air ones it's because of the reverse recoil they feel on the yeah, scope so most air guns right so most air guns have a spring in them and they recoil both ways and your traditional rifle scopes are only glued in place on the front side because that's where your recoil comes from or on the back side rather because that's where your recoil comes from so a tradition will destroy a standard rifle scope because it will displace your lenses uh, where a PCP air gun does not have that problem. All right. Now, I still know things. I've been gone a while. I, as far as Umarex goes with air guns, they are not a top of the line company. They don't even offer the best gun at the price point they offer. So if you're using this as an example of what a $350, $400 PCP is like, no, no, don't, don't use that as an example. Uh, uh, you can go to Pyramid Air and find better guns in this price range that have better triggers. Um, you can also, because it comes, or this particular one came with a pump, the pump is kind of one of those like a pistol that comes with his own holster. It, it, it's just kind of sort of a placeholder until you find out that what they gave you is garbage. It'll work for now, but there's better things you can get to use in place. And I think that's what you'll find out with a Humorex air gun. Even on their website, some of the air guns have a 2.5 uh, star review, but you can't read it. But they put it on the it put it on anyway. And I've never used, so I've never used any air gun other than something I could buy from Walmart. So I have, obviously those aren't PCP guns. Uh, so I have zero experience in this. Um, there's, a, but, there's a whole different world, man. Um, they do long yeah. range shooting competition hunter, uh, for air gun. Like 100 yards, knocking down uh, uh, um, targets and things like that. So it yeah, it so is. I watched a hunting show a while back where dudes were shooting deer with a three fifty seven caliber 
air gun. Yep. And I was yep. like, y'all shooting deer with BB guns? I mean, that's what it sounded like <laughs> to me, but it's not the case. No. Air it's... guns are cool, man. Um, you know, but I, again, I don't know anything about any of the companies, anything about air guns, but I do know that the air guns of today are not your granddad's Red Rider. Yep. Not at all. Yep. There you go. So that was the Umarex Origin review. And you know something that you cannot put on an Umarex Origin? That is VZ Grips. But they have been manufacturing handgun grips since 2003. Uh, they may even make handgun grips to fit Zane's revolver, but we'll go over that later. <laughs> With a reputation for quality, consistency, and innovation, top-tier manufacturers choose VZ Grips. They come in a variety of styles, patterns, colors, and are manufactured from proprietary G10, micarta, or carbon fiber. They have varying degrees of textures, and VZ offers a wide range of grips for all different firearm types. They are made in the USA, and you can get more than just handgun grips. In fact, our featured grip of the week this week is the AR Frag Grip. So, of course, as you know, this is the AR Grip, but it's got like a frag pattern like a grenade kind of it's just kind of a square little pattern that sticks up looks pretty grippy you can get it in a few different colors all the normal stuff so you can check out vz grips at vzgrips.com and if you use the code ggr15 you'll get 15 percent off those handgun or rifle grips so zane besides the ruger revolver what kind of revolver do you have now or is it another ruger Nah, so I have, I actually got, I don't know if I talked about this on the show or not. I I bought a uh, 44 Magnum. Uh, it's like a, a K or in frame knockoff that uh, manufactured in Italy or something. It's an Astra Arms. It's imported by Astra Arms. It's a two and three quarter inch barrel 44 Magnum stainless, and it uses smith and wesson grips and uh it got stolen from me about 12 years ago <laughs> and i got contacted by the sheriff's office uh, about six months ago that the guy they found with it had been arrested and convicted and i could come get my gun <laughs> nice uh, so i have a 44 mag now that it was something i bought when i was like I don't know how long ago I said, but I was 22 and it was stolen. I'm 35 now, so yeah. So maybe VZ uh, Grips will sell. Will have something that'll fit it, but who knows? I'll put a VZ grip on it because <laughs> yeah. it needs some kind of grip on it. It's a two and three quarter inch 44 Magnum. <laughs> exactly. you understand how bad that thing sucks when you shoot it? Now, is it the fireball that comes out the end? Because it's probably not the recoil because there's not enough barrel to create any. Oh, there's recoil. <laughs> it's all of it. A 21-year-old Zane made an extremely poor decision when when purchasing that firearm. But they're like, hey, we got your gun. Do you want it back? Absolutely, I want it back. I don't know what I'm going to do with the damn thing. But. <laughs> exactly. Okay. So now we can get into the product spotlight and discussion. And first up, we have the Faxon Overwatch Hunter. MSRP on this thing will be $3,499. And, yeah, this is a 16-inch 8.6 black bolt-action rifle, uh, which is why I put it in here, because I was like, wait. Why it's got to be black, man? I I don't know. right there, bro. I know. But I put this in here because I was like, wait, Faxon's making a bolt-action rifle. Okay, yeah, it's in the 8. Six blackout, but hey, whatever. So, like we said, a 16 inch, it does have a one and three twist, so it's one of the fast tr twist barrels. Uh, does come with a thread protector, taper adapter, so if you're running a tapered suppressor, and a, and a remage style nut. Uh, they're running an IOTA EKO midnight gray stock. Uh, it's running a Faxon TAC-30 action and bolt by Stiller. 
Uh, it's got a Timney Elite Hunter 510 V2 trigger in it. Uh, Hawkins Precision Bottom Metal, which is AICS mag compatible. This thing weighs 6.66 pounds. It's 35 and a half inches long. It's 2.25 inches wide, and they say it's six inches tall, basically, depth-wise. But, you know, if you're looking at something into this new 8.6 black or, you know, 350, whatever it is, or 375, whatever, I, I don't know. But if you're looking at something like this, this, like we said, is the fast twist for shooting super heavy subsonic loads out of it, essentially. I'm going to yeah. shoot the floor over to you guys. Yeah, that's a fast twist. <laughs> like, yeah. So, okay, so I got a couple of feelings on this. Uh, and I'll, you know, my initial thought was, oh, so 338 Federal's not a thing? Like a 308 cartridge necked up to 338? That's been around for many years. But I did a little more research and realized they cut the shoulder back a little more and they, they optimized this for a very heavy bullet traveling at a lower speed. Basically, they wanted to say, hey, 300 blackout's cool. Let's make it cooler, but we got to stick it in a bigger action. Okay. So that's neat. Um, I like Faxon a lot. I have a lot of Faxon products. There's a, not a rifle, a pistol in that safe right over there that has a lot of Faxon products on it. This price is even higher than what I would expect, considerably higher than what I would expect from Faxon, considering the quality they provide, and they provide good quality products. I don't know about the cartridge. I assume the cartridge is going to be great. I feel like if you get this cartridge and you're not shooting it suppressed, you're missing the entire effing point. Um, but I don't know. It's interesting. I don't know that I'd want it in bolt action. I feel like this is a cartridge designed for a AR-10 slash... 762 large caliber whatever you want to call it platform AR which they Faxon is also so making this, this is actually correct this is actually developed for the military um they wanted something to go on AR10 uh so they made it of course it uses a 762 by 51 cartridge and it's necked up to 338 caliber and they wanted it to be subsonic but they wanted it to be accurate so that's why it has that crazy spin if you look down the barrel it looks like it's threaded for a screw that's how fast the spin is um i shot uh the q because it was developed by the owners of q so i shot the q fix i guess they call it suppressed out in vegas on the line this thing is almost cartoon quiet when you shoot it with a 300 grain round uh it's pretty damn accurate even though i was having a hard time seeing through the scope since I have some video that I really haven't posted, I think I'll put it together. And then when this airs Friday, uh, I'll have it up. So if anybody wants to go to Simon Says Train over the weekend, and I'll probably put it on Simon Says Train on the YouTube, uh, my YouTube channel, so people can actually see us talking to the guys, see uh, the, what the round looks like, especially when it uh, is used and deformed, because I have a, a pretty good steel shot of that. And... Uh, I think it's pretty cool. I was listening to an interview with the owner of Q, and this was a round shot show time. They said they were making 100,000 rounds to send out to influencers, and they have another million rounds of this being produced uh, by companies like Hornady, Gorilla Ammunition, and I think one more. So they have quality uh, company making the ammo. Uh, they have Faxon making the barrels for both AR-10s and for bolt actions, and it's open source. So they want other companies to be able to produce this in the correct specs and get it out there. So they were really talking about this. Go ahead. L let me ask you, how's the recoil on it? Dude, it's nothing. It, it, so, it's, it's and, the nothing. Reason I, and the reason I ask is because I noticed Faxon makes an 8-inch barrel for AR-10 in this caliber. And 
That's well, the thing that interests me, right? They were really talking because about getting a 12.5, 12 inch is, is like the sweet spot, but eight inch yeah. with a suppressor, you still gonna have a overall short firearm that you can take out and just drop pretty much anything. Uh, they took it to Africa. We're dropping lions, water buffalo, or, or cape buffalo, excuse me, and uh, zebra, no problem. Because that eight inch barrel is what really interested me. Because I'm like, man, if I can get a lot of energy out of an eight inch barrel and throw a whatever, a, a K style can on the end of it, I'm still looking at a 14 inch overall package. And I heard that makes you really happy. Right, jokes, giggity, <laughs> haha, um, and, he, and he, putting some serious, you know, s- some serious energy down range, and, uh, and that's the only kind of thing that really interests me with this. Uh, if you really, the bolt action, the rifle itself, the bolt action. I was never a fan of bolt action three hundred blacks, mostly because, yeah, it's cool, it's super quiet, but I don't care. Um, if yeah. you watch the so ballistic the, gel with clear ballistic gel, you can actually see the spirals in the ballistic gel when it hits because it's going that fast. It actually <laughs> it actually tunnels in and it stays. So the permanent wound cavity still has the spirals in it. It's freaking crazy. That is. Yeah, and we got to remember, you know, big bullets going just under the speed of sound Hitting hard is not a new thing. Nope. Right? I mean, 4570, anybody? Like, it, it's not a new concept, but we're just figuring out how to do it better. And I'm very skeptical of this round. I hate the rifle. Sorry, I don't like bolt actions in subsonic <laughs> because that's stupid. <laughs> Unless you're just into shooting super, whatever. Whatever. And I have no idea. Look, firearms companies, quit being lazy assholes. Because I'm reading this, right? And it's like, cannot be shipped to California, Connecticut, D.C., Hawaii, Illinois, Maryland, Massachusetts, New York, or New Jersey. Look, outside of California, wow. I don't even think California has a, ros- a roster for long arms. Yeah, it's a full so action rifle. Full action rifles are legal in all of them. And it's, a, it's, a, it's, a full, it's got a full length 16 inch barrel. Oh, you know what? It's got a th- it's got a threaded barrel. Oh, There's no difference. Doesn't have any of the other features. No one, no one. Just stop being lazy and listening to your lawyers. Take a little bit of effort so you can sell your product because this is like seven states that someone or, who wants to order calls up and they or, may have to bicker with you. Just, yeah, or just sell them because what are they gonna do? Take you to court? You're not in the same state. Whatever. It's not so, a federal I mean, law. Just stop yeah, being late the, the yeah. gun store supports what they'll do. Yeah, the gun store can't send it back, but that, this is the pro- this is not a problem. I know it's not a problem in Jersey. I know it's not a problem in New York. It's like just come on, yeah. put some effort into your website. There There's you a go. million gun owners in Jersey alone. Actually, 1.8 million. Um, if somebody's interested in this, why would you want them turned off just by visiting your site? Like immediately. Oh, I like can't get it. Yep, that's a, that's a good point. You, anybody else got anything on this thing? I, I want to love the round, but I, the rifle. I'm, I wasn't saying I don't. Uh, <laughs> I just got into a 300 blackout game, suppressed eight eight inch barrel. If this this is just something else, is just I want to get for a short package with a suppressor on it, like I did my 300 blackout, but. It's just, I don't know, it's, it's so new. It kind of reminds me of the 224 Valkyrie. And I'm like, Zane, the 4570 has been around for a long time. You know, they're suppressing that thing now. You know, a lot of the, like the Henry's. I, I want to lock it. I really do because I hog hunt a lot and I bear hunt. And that would be an awesome round for 50 yards to knock them down with. So I, I, I think, it, I hope it develops well because I'll be buying one if it does. But in an AR-10 platform, exactly pistol configuration. Yeah, I, I just feel like we're to the point. Yeah, I, I just feel like we're to the point with farm development that 
we've got semi-automatics very close to the accuracy level that both actions are. You, you're still always going to squeeze a teeny bit more accuracy out of a extremely well-built bolt action than you will out of an extremely well-built semi-automatic. But if what you're going for is absolute silence, yeah, a closed chamber is 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 better. But I just don't understand this round in a bolt action unless what you're going for is absolute <laughs> stupid quiet. And if that's what you're going for, go for it. But I think this round is designed for a semi-automatic gun. Well, it depends on where you go hunting. Again, these guys went hunting in Africa with this gun. And they cannot take a semi-automatic with them, and other places are like that like too. Better round and that's if that's the case, there's better round choices. I think they well, not took if you're it. testing your rifle out because you made it. <laughs> yeah, that's why they <laughs> took sure. it. Yeah. That's why they took it. Okay. But we don't live in countries that have stupid. Well, most <laughs> of us don't live in countries that have what? stupid. Uh, <laughs> so, <fair> point, Tony. <laughs> so that was the facts in Overwatch Hunter. <laughs> yeah, if you think about it, the last two products, one was an air gun and the other is a bolt action rifle, and neither one of them was selling shirts. <laughs> so, <laughs> next up is the swamp. Sounds like you need both of them. Yep. <laughs> next up is the Swamp Fox Kraken. MSRP on this is three hundred forty nine dollars. This is something more, more up Zane's alley maybe. This is their no, new closed emitter, you know, mini style red dot. Basically, is what they're saying. Uh, you know, you can either get it in red or Zane's favorite color of green, because you know everything's green in Florida. He says so. Green doesn't do him any good. But it has a three MOA dot. Uh, the lens diameter is 16 millimeters. It does have 10 brightness settings. Of course, it's shockproof, essentially, and waterproof and all that stuff. Uh, they say the battery life is about two years real world because it's running their shake and wake system. It's 1.85 inches long, 1.38 inch, inches wide, and 1.27 inches high. It is two and a half ounces without the battery. And the 2032 batteries don't weigh much, so I guess it doesn't really matter in that case. Of course, it's parallax free at 33 yards or pretty much anywhere. The mount type is it's RMR adapted or MOS adapted. Uh, it's made from 7075 aluminum. You have 45 MOA each direction to adjust it. And the reason they say it's RMR or MOS adapted is because you, it comes with little adapter plates because there's no way to mount it straight down onto a slide. So therefore you have to run some sort of like weavers Picatinny system. It's small, but that's why they make the little adapters. But if you're looking for a closed optic that won't, you know, if it gets water, it's on the outside lenses. It's, there's no ch real chance of getting water on the um, emitter lens or anything to that effect. You know, I, don't have one of these closed style optics but I so I don't know if I like them on a pistol or not of course you can always put it on a rifle or something like that because it does if that's what you're looking for I thought I I think they're kind of neat uh, but you know everybody's going to them it seems like or at least having an option to do it and the swamp fox stuff I've had seems pretty pretty good uh zane has one he's trying to show us on his rifle i think his is like the one of the other open emitter ones uh, let's see if we can make him large yeah it's hard to see on there but it's on top of that scope he's looking at if you're watching the video it's like a liberty or justice or something like that so there we're done with zane yeah and that's that's what I kind of think with the Picatinny nonsense kind of mount they put up is a better um, place for it as as a backup. I don't know. So I like I like closed emitter optics, right? Living in South Florida, it's hot 
outside. Uh, and we have the AC running literally everywhere. And in my older age, I have started wearing glasses again and walking from my house to outside of my house or from my car to outside of my car, they fog up. That's the biggest thing of a closed emitter optic is you don't get that. Now, for concealed carry, is it a big is it a big deal? Not really, because the gun sitting right next to your skin, it's staying warm. It's not going to fog. If you're a cop, you're a security guard, or if you're an open carry guy, that's where it kind of comes into play. Um, closed emitters are cool. I think they are the future. I've shot a few closed emitter optics. They're great. I don't know about this mounting system they have. I'm a little skeptical of it. Like I said, I just dropped that rifle on the ground and let's make sure it works. Yeah, Swamp Fox still works after being dropped on the ground. That's about the ninth time it's been dropped. What, so. what I was going to say, Zane, is... is this is kind of the same mounting system that all of these small closed emitter optics use. Uh, like I and know they kind of have to because of right. the battery and, and the footprint, right? Yep. I, I just don't like them, right? I yeah. think the Acro, the Endpoint Acro uses a similar. Yeah. Uh, and I'm not that you're going to be able to see this, but you know this open emitter one. You know it's got two little screws, and there's two little witness paint marks on them. You can't do that with a closed emitter, right? The Holosun 5, 509? 509T, yeah. 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 It, it has a, a weird... Everyone I talk to says the mounting platform's fine, solid, it works. You know, my, my favorite YouTube fellow, which is not a YouTube fellow, it's actually a fire instructor, Aaron Cowan throws him shits off his roof and whatnot may don't break so it's probably good i like a direct mount but whatever um closed emitters is the way to go if you're not carrying concealed if you're carrying concealed it really doesn't matter and, and like you said it's but for right for rifles for open carry you're a cop security guard you live in a state that recognizes open carry which florida doesn't that's what you choose to do because of what you think is best. Yeah, uh, oh, closed emitters probably the way to go. Yeah. And another <laughs> another closed emitter optic in the game is good, right? Even if it sucks. Yeah. The and more I, options you have, it drives innovation. It makes everything better. Yep. So. And I don't think the Swamp Fox sucks. I, you know, having use some of their other stuff and you didn't break it for the night time so <laughs> with the one you have so, uh, you know, I keep dropping I keep dropping it it still hasn't broken I haven't like straight up Aaron Callen dropped it yet yeah but, I uh, get you knocked it over a few times and still working Tony okay so my my experience was my experience with Swamp Fox I've got uh, about a half a dozen of them and I've got the justice on my knock Glock Glock that I've built and I took a 30 foot tumble off of a riverbank down to the water with it while hunting. That thing still come up and run. It's got, I think I posted pictures of it. It had mud, everything on it, and it still runs like a champ. Swamp Fox started off, they were, I've been following them for a while. They were a little iffy, I thought at first, but they have improved their game. I've, I've run them on all of my carry pistols now, and I've got them on shotguns and rifles, and th their customer service is second to none. Because I I did break one, and um and sent it back, and within about five days I had a new one sitting there. So I, I love yeah. them. I haven't had any issues with them whatsoever. Well, the first the first pistol it, it, red dot they released had some issue, right? It was not I, a good. Yeah. I actually cracked and, one of and them. They, yeah, and they went back to the drawing board. I, I mean, they took customer feedback, you know, to heart, and were like, okay. Well, we, well we understand something. I've got a, a crack it on order. Rusty's new with gear testing, and he hasn't figured out that you throw the pistol down the bank, not jump down with it. <laughs> so uh, if we 
<laughs> we can help him out a little bit and let him know so he doesn't kill himself because you know yeah. you drag it behind your truck that's yeah. what you do I, I, yeah but he dragged it behind his truck while it was well, in his holster while he had it on <laughs> <laughs> if it wasn't for, if it wasn't for the black rhino concealment holster and the the safe line belt that everything probably went everywhere but i tumbled down into the water with it and uh and i was two weeks out from having my neck fused together and it, we all survived so i call that a win so yeah yeah i would too so that was the yeah, no, I, think swamp, I think swan fox has uh come a long way from their initial offering because when they <laughs> released that initial red dot that thing was garbage. <laughs> like, it just was. And you know what? You, yeah. you talk about you broke one, Rusty. I broke a hollow son. Man, I, I know people who broke Pidgeons. Yeah, everything I can breaks. Break, I can break it. Right. But I do think they've come a long way. And, I, I again, I think these, these smaller companies coming in and coming at a cheaper price point, just even if you don't want to go that way, it pushes innovation to the bigger companies to step their game up too. At the end of the day, this optic is a win for the optic buyers. Whether you want this one or not, I would take, this is a good thing. Yeah, I yep. would take it over any of the Vortex Red Dots for pistols any day of the week. I'm, I, 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 I'm 100%. On the <laughs> yeah. yeah, Vortex still wondering what happened. So many trash. <laughs> Yeah, Vortex, Vortex still wondering what happened. Look, and I got Vortex optics on rifles and stuff, and and they're great. But Vortex pistol stuff, it's just not good. <laughs> yeah, it's well, not good. It's 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 a sad day when when Crimson Trace red dot pistol stuff surpasses the Vortex stuff. <laughs> Vortex yeah, like five yeah, years yeah, ago, we had a lot of more. Vortex yeah. five years ago had this thing on lock, and they just wonder what happened. And it's like yeah. you took it for granted. Yeah. Like like so other like people figure out the recipe. Yeah, as much as I hate Sig, like I'll take a Sig optic over Vortex optic. <laughs> there we go. Okay. I, I built I built that. Let's get this thing I, moving. I built my my MFB ten around the the Justice with the green dot on it. So I mean that's how much I like it. Yeah, I hate green dots. Everything's <laughs> green in Florida. Yeah, Red yeah, dots. yeah. So that we, was the Swamp have, Fox Kraken. We have seasons in Tennessee. <laughs> exactly. Next up is something that should be in eight six black out maybe. <laughs> Anderson, our all uh, you know, our favorite Anderson Manufacturing has brought out the AM10 Breacher. MSRP is. I hate it. Nine 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 ninety nine, <laughs> and this essentially is their three hundred eight AR ten pistol. Is this for three three of them? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> you would hope. <laughs> essentially, it's a twelve and a half inch three hundred eight Winchester. Uh, you know, it's got an M M lock handguard. Oh, Jesus Christ! What? <laughs> This is a 125308 from Anderson. Yeah. Why are we yep. talking about this? <laughs> this is the dumbest shit. Stop it. Stop it. Hey, it's Boom. got an SBA3 <laughs> pistol brace and Next. and a Magpul K2 grip. I bet it, I bet it does. <laughs> hey, How much does it cost? A thousand bucks. If it's more than a what? <laughs> Yeah, that's why Rusty said it. That's why I said, are they getting free of them for that price? <laughs> exactly. Anderson then lost her goddamn Listen, minds. I, I just <laughs> traded off an old war horse not too long ago for another horse, and I would do that with the Andersons. Before I Dude, the who the hell wanted me a 12 5 to begin with? <laughs> what do you breach him with 3 away? You was, breach with 12 gauge. Somebody the, must want. What the fuck is a 12 5 <laughs> 308. What? Who? Did you know I was coming on, Chad? I dropped my knife. See? You got me so mad, my knife done fell. 
Did you just put this in to piss me off? No, no. But I put it in here because <laughs> because I saw I saw this and and my initial reaction was almost exactly what Zane's was. I was I, I'm like, wait, wait a second. This is one. It's an Anderson, which you know, questionable. And I'm like, wait a second. This is a twelve and a half inch three oh eight, and they want a grand for it. I'm like. Wait a second. Where where did I go wrong here? You know, but you know what? Perfect candidate for eight point six blackout. There you I go. told you. Yeah. That's why. I but, s- but also, they call them breacher. You don't breach with three oh eight. You <laughs> shoot people at twelve hundred yards with three oh eight. You breach with breaching twelve gauge rounds. Or in my case, oh. a nifty little axe and a halligan will get you in anywhere. But. This is stupid. Don't even talk about it. Don't don't even say their name again. Just move on. It's stupid. This okay. is the dumbest so, thing you've ever put in. What? What? No, it's I don't the, understand it, why you would even put this Zane, in the show notes. You have, okay. you have not been here for a while. We have had some stupid stuff in the show notes. Oh, this is the greatest, dude. Welcome back, baby. Welcome back. <laughs> I freaking missed you, you piece of crap. <laughs> I missed uh, you too, bro. <clears throat> okay. Oh, dude. I saw this thing, and I was like, all right, let me look it up. Oh, you done? You still reading it? I'm sorry. Go ahead. Me? No, no. I'm not no. the only one that thinks this is a POS. But... Uh, I'm not, the, the, I mean, it's got everything else on it. It's just your standard... AR-10 stuff, so there's nothing really Can't else to... On. Exactly. I mean, I'm I'm with you, and you know, it's kind of like that AR company that can't make straight straight handguards <laughs> and that doesn't like us. So. <laughs> oh, crap. We got a new game. Give, Thanks. Give me a Bear Creek any day. <laughs> exactly. But, okay, so this is out there. Uh, if you guys want, <laughs> want to laugh some more at it, uh, okay. We we have a new we have a drinking game, and it only applies when Zane's on, and it's thanks to his his lady friend says we have to take a drink every time Zane reminds us he's a firefighter. <laughs> I just said well, Axe and Halligan. I didn't I didn't I didn't specify what Axe <laughs> and Halligan reference. Oh, so anyway, before Zane went off, so I tried to look this oh, up boys, right. Their hoses. Do I need to mute everybody? Anyways, for I, I need to, to mute me. I, I need to mute me. I tried to look this up because I wanted to try to be unbiased, even though I was biased from the beginning. And I'm like, all right, let's talk about this. Why would I have a 12-5 pistol? One, you firing 308. You, you think that 12-5 gets annoying when it's in a 5.56 five, or a 300 blackout? This should be real interesting, spitting out these fireballs. Two, 12 5, you just got pretty much in the same neighborhood as 762 by 39. So, what did you just do? I mean, you still got that velocity. You might have a heavier round, but I'm talking about uh, 127, 122 grain in the 762 by 39 and a 147 grain maybe in the, in the 308. You did nothing but create a whole bunch of noise for a lot more money. Um, with an even more unstable freaking uh, brace, uh, uh, you know, three points of contact. So, I mean, yeah, great, they made it. And I'm looking at how much their AR-10s cost, and their AR-10s are around 800, seven, between 700 and 850. So this is probably what this will go for. And, and I'm like, well, why would I mess around with an in a 308 plat? Dude, it doesn't make sense. Uh, I don't know what you're doing. I mean, what, you're going to hog hunt? Then, then you should use 300 blackout and have less kick, less ammo costs, less everything. Exactly. Dude, and you Just can saying. barely get a 5.56 five, AR to run extremely reliably for this price point, right? I mean, th- there are exceptions. There are, you know, some, but for the most part, if you want to buy a 5.56 five, gun, you're spending more than a thousand bucks. Mm-hmm. Three oh eight's a different animal, right? Yeah, you're looking. That's at... a hard gun to get to run correctly, and I feel like Anderson doesn't have that nailed down, based on 
everything I've seen from Anderson that's come through classes and whatever. Also, it's a 12.5 inch barrel. Also, they call it a breacher. Also, this is the dumbest shit I've seen in. You did this on purpose, Chad. No, I will see. I didn't know you were going to be on, but I, I you made... knew I was going to be here. And you put this in here just to piss me off. No, no, I put it in here for everybody <laughs> else. This, I'm saying. What yeah, the... don't buy it. It's yeah. Stupid. Okay, we're I'm we're done with this. If, if you want to buy, if you I wanted be... to go with this. Go on, Rusty. Right. If you want to be a beta test, to be a beta test. But we told you. <laughs> Okay. okay that... so my thing is, if you if you're trying to get the same velocities out of a 308, go with like a 65 Grendel or a 7.62 by 39, like Tony said. Smaller platform, shorter barrel, and you still get the same energy that you're getting out of that short barrel. Exactly. So that was the Anderson the yeah. AM10 breacher. So we're gonna, we're we're going to move on to something that probably is going to make Zane get mad again, because you know. I'll have to mute him. It's the Oryx pistol chassis. Uh, basically, this is so if for some reason, you know, you have a How a Mini or Remington 700 pistol chassis platform, uh, you can drop it in this little chassis and have yourself a bolt action pistol. You know, if that's if that's your type of thing, it does take the standard AICS magazines. If it's 700, you know, it's got some M-Lock slots underneath it's got like a little you know brace to rest it up against a platform or something it's got you know all the all the it's got a pick rail on the back so you can put a folder or whatever you would like on the back of course it's got to be a brace unless you sbr it so it's something to that effect you know rx makes a nice chassis it is an od green does weigh two pounds it's glass filled polymer and aluminum so it is a true chassis uh you can run a one and a quarter inch barrel in it if you would like diameter wise you know it's another option out there if you're into bolt action pistols you know they of course they've been around basically as long as you know tony has so you know he's a year older than me so i can say that <laughs> you guys got anything on this besides zane <laughs> I do. I've got a Thompson Center in 44 mag. It's a single shot break action. I think this is just another added to the game of those who like pistol, who like to shoot rifle cartridges out of pistols for like certain uh, states like Missouri has a, any other weapon season, which basically consists of pistol. You, you take a rifle round and a pistol cow, I mean a pistol length barrel. You can go deer hunt after the rifle or their bow season is over with. This is, I mean, this is a good platform for it. I, I really think for hunters that are backpacking in somewhere or top cover, I think it's great. Yeah, I could see, I, I can see that. See, I wish we had. You talking crap? And really? why are you talking crap, Chad? <laughs> what I was going to say was Florida has a lot of places where you can only hunt with pistols, and the restrictions are has to be under a 10 inch barrel. So for that specific application, I can see this niche use case for anything else. It's stupid. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's the thing is it? I, I know there's applications for it. I just, for me, there's actually not, uh, if I remember correctly, Oryx is a division or owned by MDT chassis. So, or, you know, they, I, I know they make good stuff, so this is going to be good stuff, too. So, I guess we'll move but on. also, yep. where you can hunt with pistols, you, you you can also hunt with semi-automatic pistols, so get an AR pistol. <laughs> yeah, I heard Anderson has a 10. <laughs> 308? No, no, they no. Got, they got a 12 5 308, apparently. And That's not going to work in Florida. In Florida, that won't work, yeah, right? but you could put the 8. You can put oh, that's right. In. It's got. You know what, Anderson, make a nine five three zero eight. Why not? Because we you can shoot deer with it in Florida. So, well, Anderson, you know, help us out, bro. They got the eight inch. They got the eight inch uh, uh, 
eight point six from Faxon Barrel you can put on your. I'd rather have that. Rather have that. There you go. All done. Okay. All right. <laughs> so that's the Oryx chassis, uh, pistol chassis actually. Next up is a folding knife from Kubi. It's their Wolverine. MSRP on this is a whole, whole fifty bucks, uh, which you know for a folding knife of decent build, I'm guessing, be having one of their fixed blades. Uh, the one in the show notes is blue. They make a few different other colors. Overall length is six point nine three inches. Blade length is two point nine one. The handle's four inches long. Handle thickness is a half inch. Blade width is 0.91 inches. It's 0.12 inches thick, and it is made from D2 steel. This one's dark stone washed with a drop point blade. Does have caged ceramic ball bearings. This particular one is a flipper with a liner lock. Weighs 3.42 ounces. Of course, it is made in China. It's I I put this in the show notes one because I do have one of their fixed blades and it's actually built way better than I expected it to be. It's something for 50 bucks. You can't really go wrong, but I did like how it has a decent finger groove in the handle so you can grab onto it. I, that's about all I have to say about it. Uh, it doesn't look like it has a ton of like jimping on the top or anything, but has a little bit. Anybody else got anything on it? I look yeah, at it blade as, steel, D2. Yeah, you notice that D2 pretty much blade steel knives and folders of this size has gone down in the last two years, like from $80 knives to $50 knives pretty much. Yep. So that's a good thing um, because $50 knife, yeah. I mean, people buy $50 curse dolls all the time. That's, that's gift giving. Uh, hey, I bought you this knife. It's not a huge pain in the ass. I didn't kill a bunch of money. And you got decent blades still. Um, I still have to laugh that they took a picture of it in someone's pocket and still have it sitting way too high in the pocket. <laughs> and, <laughs> and it's, it's like, look how deep this pocket carries. And it's like two inches hanging out of the pocket. Exactly. And it'll go all the way down. It's got a deep carry pocket clip on it. <laughs> Yeah, it'll just it'll make the whole knife disappear, and they still have two inches of knife sticking out of their pocket. <laughs> but other than that, yeah, um, cool. Hey, another quality knife that you can get, give, whatever, if you don't mind buying a knife that's made in China. That's exactly right. And and Zane, this particular one does isn't semi serrated, so sorry. I don't think they make any, do they? Uh I they might. I don't know. I didn't look that far. So, yeah, either way. Zane? Yeah, I just, I just need to learn to sharpen knives huh? so I can get away from the serration. Well, for what you do, I, I understand why you need serrations. Why? What does he do? Oh, <laughs> it, didn't, it, didn't, it didn't work. But <clears throat> I abused this thing. This I dropped it in the ocean the other day. Sprayed it off. It's got corrosion on it. This is thing I've been carrying for four years now. You really need to have somebody sharpen it because you have to use the serrations to cut at this point. Because <laughs> this thing is duller than a butter knife. But, gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, man. Rusty? I, I, I think it's a good quality knife for what it is. Uh, the D2. And the ceramic ball bearings, uh, you know that that's that's always a plus right there. I mean, I've bought a lot of uh, the best tech knives lately for around the same price with the D two, and I tell you what, they they hold up great. Um, I, I am a kind of a I don't say a knife snob, but I like more higher end quality knives. But I've been carrying my Chinese made knife for the D two for a long time, and our, it holds a great edge. D2 is one of the best steels you can make out there for overall performance. And you just can't go wrong with it. It's better than any 440 stainless you can get. Yeah. Yep. yep. So that was the Kubi Wolverine. Now, we don't have any listener feedback. We'll probably have some next week after after people are like, who's this Zane guy? 
<laughs> who hates? I hear he's a firefighter. Bleep, bleep, bleep. <laughs> exactly. I I hear he hates it's everything. True. I am, which means we have to drink. Oh, <laughs> so Tony, it's all yours. Hey man, the next diversity shoot is uh, August 11th at Gunfire Range in Woodland Park. If you follow me on my social media, you can click in my bio or my profile and buy a ticket straight from Eventbrite because of the video I made Saturday. Um, and then Yankee Marshall talked about it yesterday. We've actually started selling tickets already and we've limited to 30. So if you want to get in, get in now um, because we're only doing we're only allow, allowing 30 people in because of classroom size and number of volunteers we have. So August 11th, Gun for Hire Range in Woodland Park is the next diversity shoot. We're going to have cool guns. Already talked to the guys. Um, there's going to be some nice stuff showing up. So hopefully you can be there. We're going to celebrate our Second Amendment rights. We're going to be ans- answering questions about carrying in Jersey. Because guess what? Somehow it's legal to open carry in Jersey, but it's not legal to open carry in Florida. <laughs> ah! Hey, Tony. So. I nope. I got a question about that. So, yeah. if you're like say 18, can you open carry in Jersey? I have no no idea. It's all new. Okay. So you still have to go past the judge. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. All right, <clears throat> but anyway, that's what's going on with us with the diversity shoot. Can't wait uh, to see you guys at the next event again, August 11th, Gun for High Range. See you there. And if you want to support us, he's going to tell you how. But uh, really, I just checked out my Patreon. Hey, I'm going to start posting videos. You guys want to be a part of it, like, and see some stuff that I got from shop that's going to go on Patreon first. Join up so uh, it can actually increase the amount of money we have to help us pay for stuff. Because the events are getting bigger because we're hosting them more. Like we steadily picked up, hosting them at different ranges, and more people are starting to come. So my bill for pizza is going up. So help a brother out, please. There you go. So for us, send questions, comments, or feedback to us at gungearreview at gmail.com. Remember to subscribe and leave us an iTunes review. You can check out all the other great shows on the Firearms Radio Network at firearmsradio.net. Don't forget to visit the Firearms Insider at firearmsinsider.tv. Check us out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Firearms Insider. And thank you for listening to the largest pound-for-pound podcast on the network. And we are out. Epstein didn't kill himself.